Let's talk about how to use GarageBand with an audio interface. Let's take a look at the equipment used in this video. The Focusrite Scarlett 2i4 audio interface. A condenser and a dynamic microphone. Quarter inch cable, a MIDI cable, and a microphone cable. A MacBook Pro. And two thump speaker monitors. Next, we'll put everything together. The audio interface is connected to the device hosting GarageBand like this, via a USB cable. As depicted here, the audio interface is connected to the MacBook Pro with a gray cable, which is the USB cable. This is what it looks like in the back of the audio interface. You may need a USB adapter like this, depending upon which hardware you are using. It is also handy to have a USB port available to plug in multiple USB devices, including other MIDI instruments, such as a keyboard. Next, we'll take a closer look at the audio interface. The audio interface accepts two types of input cables, a quarter inch cable and a microphone cable. You can use the quarter inch cable for instruments such as a guitar or bass, and the microphone cable is mostly used for microphones. There is a toggle switch below the input that should be set to instrument when using a quarter inch cable, which you will see demoed shortly. You may also use the MIDI port for such things as electronic drums, for example. Here, I would use a MIDI cable to connect the audio interface to the electronic drum module, like this. This is the gain knob. This is the instrument toggle that I mentioned earlier. This is the output volume. And this is the headphones volume. Next, we'll cover recording with GarageBand. To create a track, go to the track drop-down list and select New Track. The Choose Track UI will appear. Here, you can choose from four different types of tracks, and also select your input source and input device. This is the record button which should be clicked when starting or ending a recording. This is the metronome. This is the counting button. To set your audio preferences, go to the GarageBand drop-down list and select Preferences. Make sure to set the proper input and output devices for your setup. I am choosing my audio interface for both because I am using it for all my inputs and also outputting my sound through the audio interface out to monitor speakers. You may also click here to use a tuner for certain instruments such as guitar and bass.
Click here to initiate looping for a portion of your project. This is ideal for things such as working out a lead or a vocal part. Plugins are located here and are a great way to enhance your track sound. As you can see, they are easy to turn on and off and add and remove. There is also a great deal to choose from. This is the EQ plugin. This is the play button. This is how you adjust the volume for a track. And this is how you adjust the volume for the project. Now, we'll delve into outputting sound. You may output sounds from your audio interface out to headphones like this. You may also use the output ports in the back of the audio interface like this using two quarter inch cables out to two speaker monitors. Or you could utilize your device using a speaker like this connecting it directly to the device or using Bluetooth. Let's talk about some considerations when using microphones with an audio interface in GarageBand. As I mentioned earlier in the video, there are two types of microphones, dynamic and condenser. This is a Shure SM57 microphone. It's a dynamic microphone. This is an Audio-Technica P48 microphone. This is a condenser microphone. The only thing you have to concern yourself with is to make sure that you have what they call phantom power on when using a condenser microphone. I can turn phantom power on for this audio interface by pressing this 48V button like this. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments section below.